Today we have access to endless variations of equipment in the gym. We have free weights, cables, machines, and the latest and greatest creations across gyms all over the world. We have endless knowledge, science, and data on ways to effectively build muscle and strength. But flash back to the early ages of bodybuilding, you were lucky to have access to a barbell and some free weights. In fact, even the most massive and aesthetic bodybuilding competitors back then didn't even have access to much more than that until after they had already built some of the most powerful and impressive physiques of all time, winning titles such as the Mr. America, Mr. Universe, and Mr. Olympia. It wasn't uncommon for bodybuilders back then to be performing over 400 pounds for 15 to 20 repetitions on the stiff leg deadlift, using over 300 pounds on the overhead press, and squatting over 500. And we're talking about guys in the low to mid 200 pound range. Clearly, strength and physique development went hand in hand back then. And because gym equipment was so limited back then, they were forced to use use more basic full body style of training. And today we're going to look at a typical full body three day per week training program, followed by many lifters in the Reg Park era of bodybuilding. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you would train the entire body using just seven total exercises. The movements are as follows, dips, barbell squat, front squat, bench press, power clean, bent over row, and press behind the neck. Dips were to be done first and were treated as a higher rep warm up for the upper body for the heavy training that was to follow. Generally, three sets of up to 25 reps here were performed. These were strict reps, getting a full stretch and a full squeeze at the top. After that, the basic old school barbell squat was performed for five sets of five repetitions. Five by five is as basic and old school as it gets, but the setup is often performed differently today. Originally, the setup called for two lighter progressive warm-up sets of five, and then three heavy sets of five with the same weight. And that's the base of this program. The weight should be as heavy as you can handle for just three working sets of five repetitions. Strength standards by then called for working up to at least 100 pounds over your body weight for three sets of five on this movement. And then moving on to the next exercise, which is front squats. These were to be done for five sets of five here as well, but with less weight than you did previously on the back squat. The strength standard for this movement was 50 pounds over your body weight. Next would be the bench press for two progressive warm up sets and then three heavy sets of five reps. Again, traditional five by five programming. Back then, because again, they were so limited by equipment, a movement like the bench press was considered sufficient for the chest, shoulders, and tricep training altogether. And next would be a very forgotten movement in bodybuilding, which is the power clean. As basic as it can get, all you would need is access to a barbell and some plates. Power cleans and rows are said to have built some of the most impressive physiques back then due to the natural and heavy pulling nature of these lifts. This movement was a staple five by five exercise. Again, done for two warm up sets and three working sets of five. The goal was to perform this lift with at least 30 pounds above your body weight for sets of five. And although the power clean has been considered an outdated movement for bodybuilding, one aspect of athletic style training, like performing this movement, that I personally feel has its place in bodybuilding bodybuilding is from the carryover that this lift has to other lifts. Guys were regularly power cleaning two to 300 pounds multiple times per week. And although it's not a hypertrophy specific movement, which many will argue makes it obsolete in bodybuilding, this movement is responsible for building a strong and athletic body that allowed these guys to progress much further on the basic muscle building lifts, the squat, bench press, overhead press, etc. And I personally agree that a stronger, more athletic body will always have the ability to pack on more muscle mass. Following that movement, next up was the bent over barbell row, done in strict form. These were generally done at a 90 degree angle, building a strong and dense back by performing five sets of five with up to 40 pounds over the body weight as a strength goal. And to finish off the workout, the last exercise was the press behind the neck. This movement comes with a trade-off of being high risk for injury to the rotator cuff, and not one that is personally recommended for many people today. But again, you can't argue against the results that it did produce. Some of the strongest old school bodybuilders were performing this lift with over 300 pounds. And the goal here was five by five, working up to at least 20 pounds under your body weight. This entire routine was performed three times per week and should take between 60 and 90 minutes. Generally, the stronger you get, the more rest time that'll be needed, and workout lengths could easily hit two hours or more for very strong advanced bodybuilders. And one aspect of training that's not often discussed today by bodybuilders back then is auto-regulation and training. Many old school bodybuilders unconsciously practiced it, but didn't always explain this part of training in detail. Understanding that the goal is always to drive progression by placing more weight on the bar, as you become more advanced and stronger, the less often you'll be able to add weight consistently. When reaching the intermediate or advanced stages in bodybuilding, auto-regulating each workout with the amount of weight on the bar 
is key. If you felt fatigued or under-recovered, it wasn't time to go for a personal record, but the goal that day is to hit the lift with textbook form, using a load that you could physically handle that day. Then come back in the next workout and strive for progress if it's there. Now, many people will look at this routine and say, it's obsolete for bodybuilding today. And while I agree that there are many ways to improve upon it, you have to understand that training this way was designed out of the limitations they had back then, being that they only had access to basic barbell movements in most cases. But the point I wanna stress here is, although there are some things I feel are missing from this training, this bare bones approach, it built massive, extremely strong and muscular physiques back then. And even if we apply only 80 to 90% of this training style, and fill in the gaps with smaller muscle groups and do a bit more refining movements on top of it, we can build a massive physique off the basics. And all the guys back then are proof that basic heavy training works. And if you want to go as bare bones as this approach, I think you'll be very surprised at how great the results can be from such a simple program. And if you want to train a bit more bodybuilding specific and want to know how I personally train and recommend for anyone looking to build more mass using proven old school bodybuilding training methods, I highly recommend my five day old school mass game program in the description below. And as always, if you guys wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.